All right. So our next question, and we've got a couple time for a couple more here. Should we expect a crash anytime in December? And what is the best strategy to prepare for the crash if it is coming and how to hold through the bear market? So that is a couple of complicated questions all bunched into one question. Uh, and there's a lot of different strategies that are going to depend on your risk level. So obviously nothing here is financial advice. And how, how, I'd answer this question for one person is going to be totally different for the next person. It all depends on what, what's your personal financial situation. What are your goals within the space? What is your time horizon for investing? Uh, but let's just take it one piece at a time. Should we expect a crash anytime in December? Well, right now we're holding pretty strong on this trend line. So before we jump into whether or not we'll see a crash in December, I'd really like to see what develops over the next week or so. Right. If we continue to fall here, things could get ugly. But if we find support, like I believe that we will, and we start bouncing, it could be that December is a very, very good month. Right. Last year, January was the month that the alt season kicked off. This year, maybe we're a month early, but it, we're at such a pivotal, pivotal point right now uh, with with everything just resting on its trend line. Bitcoin coming back down to its trend line here. I want to see if we get support and if we get a bounce before I make a. a judgment call on whether or not we're, we should expect a crash in December. What's the best strategy to prepare for the crash if it's coming? How do you hold through the bear market? Well, best strategy to prepare for a crash is to make sure that you have stable coins on hand, and that you have a strategy moving into a, a bear market uh, of what you want to, to be investing in. So I personally like to keep at least 10% stable coins on hand at any given moment uh, so that I can take advantage of a crash. Because yes, while crypto is going to crash or, or can crash 30, 40, 50% like it did back in May and June, right? If you had 10% stable coins to set aside and you're even comfortable with a little bit of leverage, uh, you're able to buy that dip very aggressively, that 50% discount uh, on crypto and more than a 50% discount on the total market, right? So that 10% that you, you buy on the dip is amplified two, three, four, five X because you've gotten this amazing entry point and your portfolio recovers much quicker this time around after you've bought that dip. And how do you hold through the bear market? Patience, patience and convic conviction, right? Uh, if, if you've not taken profits on anything, right? It's, it's I highly recommend not financial advice to continually take profits and, and pay yourself so that you can have those stable coin allocations. Uh, but in the bear market, that's the time for value investing. That's the time when, when everybody's run out of crypto, uh, and but by run out of crypto, I mean is no longer in the space. If they've given up on it, they've just said, "Oh, I'll just hold on to everything until the next bull market, uh, and then I'll come back to the space." That's when you do your best investing, your best value investing, and that's when you can pick up stuff for very, very cheap, right? Bill, do you have anything to say on this? Yes. So for December, I don't think it's going to be the best month for Bitcoin. I think there are mechanics related to the Bitcoin ETF that are going to just leave Bitcoin stalled. Everybody was calling for 100K Bitcoin by the end of the year. I actually told the news reporter that I brought my target down to say 75. The reporter thought that was like shocking because it was out of consensus. I just don't think the trade into the end of the year it is in the traditional cryptos. I think it's actually going to be in the metaverse. That's where the late stage parabolic might be. Now, I know the C word is in there, crash. I see people asking in the comments for sushi, sushi and Ave. So we do see you out there. We are trying to help you out. And here's the facts, folk. In, in, in the gas-riddled world of ETH DeFi, you have to ask yourself, what is the value of the ETH DeFi token like Sushi or Ave? Are there great projects? Are, there gra are they great to use? Correct me if I'm wrong, but Ave I think is available on Avalanche now. But the question is, what's the value of the token? We were talking about the lessons I've learned in tokenomics. And I'm wondering if there's going to be a give up trade in DeFi 1.0. In other words, the people are going to go, Oh, wait, I thought this was a great investment. And then they go, oh no, I have to tax loss sell this or I own the wrong thing. Bull markets have pain trades, right? It, bull markets are not parties. People can wind up wrong 
the long stuff. And all I can tell you is, you know, about a December crash, it may be a situation where one sector goes up and another sector goes down. History repeats itself. Okay. But it's not the same thing twice. And it would be painful if the thing that everyone can't get a hold of, like metaverse coins, winds up going up because it's all on Qcoin and DEXs. And the things that people do own, like DeFi blue chips, wind up going down. That may be the new definition of a crash. So sector rotation is new to crypto. It's been around forever in equities and bonds. So we want you to consider understanding the story and the tokenomics of what you own. I think the mega trend is honestly metaverse up. Okay. DeFi 1.0 down, just like don't laugh in 2004 when oil went from 50 to 140, it was oil stocks up S and P down. Okay. End of laughing. Forrest, back to you. Token Metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com.